Good morning, VIT. Everything begins with an idea. An idea invokes imagination. Imagination which thrives on improvement and sound implementation. That produces a dynamic engineer. And today we are here to celebrate that innovative engineer in us who is all set to radiate the stage with excellence. I'm your host, Nitin. I'm your host, Heli. And we heartily welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of Gravitas 2022. To embrace the tradition in the world of transformation, Let's enlighten this morning by beginning with a prayer. Tamil Thai Walt. I request everyone to raise for the invocation. Nirarum kadalodutta nilamadanda kerilorugum. Sirarum badana mena tigar parada kanda middel. Tekkanamum madir siranda dravidana tiranadum. Takka sirapira nudalum daritanarum tilagamume. Atilaga vasane pola netulagum in bamura. Yeti sayum pugal manaka irinda perum tamiranange tamiranange un sirila mai tiram viand sayal marand varta dume varta dume varta dume Now, proceeding with the program, we would like to invite Rohit Panyam to greet the gathering. On behalf of the Gravitas Organizing Committee, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome our Chancellor, Chief Guest, Guest of Honor, Vice President, Assistant Vice President, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Administrative and Department Heads, Deans, Directors, Members of Team Gravitas, Professors, Staffs, Students and other external participants who have joined us for this event and the representatives from press and media. In the past two years, we have worked together and fought the virus and grew to have deep connections towards VIT and with that we have arrived at this special day, the first in-person Gravitas after two years, Gravitas 2022. Once again, I welcome everyone to the annual Techno Management Carnival of VIT. Thank you. Thank you so much. No ceremony can begin without lighting the lamp, which is a symbol of prosperity and progress in one's life. So you'd now like to invite the dignitaries to illuminate this morning by lighting the kutturlaka.
Thank you, sir. Standing high as one of India's biggest technical fest. A platform to unleash your genius and to celebrate the engineer in you. So get ready to tickle your technical brains as we are all set to entertain and enrich you by presenting a plethora of innovative events in every avenue. A massive megathon filled with ideathons, workshops, hackathons, seminars and what not. This year's theme is all set to inspire everyone to solve real world problems and embrace challenges by developing a product. This annual fest, Gravitas 2022, is powered by Autodesk and Schneider Electric. The jubilee of events that are planned ahead will lead you to innovate, iterate and implement. With that, I request our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan to honor the Chief Guest, Dr. G. Satish Reddy, with a shawl and memento. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to request our respected Vice President, Mr. Shankar Vishwanathan, to honor our guest of honor, Mr. Deepankar Bhattacharya. Thank you, sir. Now I'd request our respected Assistant Vice President, Ms. Kadamri S. Vishwanathan, to honor the guest of honor, Ms. Chitra Sugumar. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now we would like to call upon Advaja to introduce our esteemed guest of honor. Good morning to everyone present here. I am profoundly delighted to take this opportunity to introduce our guest of honor for the day, Ms. Chitra Suguma, who is the Vice President of Resource and Development Department in Schneider Electric India. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation. When it comes to the field of energy management and digital automation, there is no other company that has proved to be this successful like Schneider Electric India. One of the main reasons for the humongous success of Schneider Electric India comes from their profound interest and investment into their research and development department. The R&D department of Schneider Electric India always bring most advanced technologies into their product and hence making their products stand out in market. Today, we have with us none other than the master brain of R&D department, Ms. Chitra Sugumar. She holds a bachelor's in engineering from SJCIT. Her experiences in various domains from consumer product to healthcare, predominantly in software, make her one of a kind leader who has seen it all and has the power to be impactful change. She has always spearheaded the R&D department with the purpose of empowering all to make the most of our energy and resources, hence bridging progress and sustainability for all. Her part in the Conserve My Planet initiative by Schneider Electric India Foundation is much commentable. Prior to joining Schneider Electric, she used to lead the global R&D for mobile surgery business of Philips. Her activities have always inspired the team to come up with innovative technological solution to make sure that every single customer who uses their product believes in their motto, life is on. So without any delay, I would like to call upon Ms. Chitra Sugumar to enlighten us with her words of true wisdom. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, and welcome everyone. I will keep it short and I'm not going to bore you with long speeches. 
but uh, vit is a very special institute for us schneider has had a very long relationship with vit we hire from vit every year this year as well i think 40 of uh, your alumni will be joining us and uh, you will also meet uh, some of your alumni who have been working with us when you when you look at the stalls so uh, vit is a very very special relationship we are currently also working on setting up a center of excellence of smart factory and uh, Uh, smart cities in vit we are currently in the process of doing it we already have labs uh, here so as you can see it's a very special enduring relationship we are very happy with and hope to see that relationship continue for long and also partner together with you in some of the areas that are very important for us like sustainability now many of you are going to enter the corporate workforce somewhere over the next 1 uh, to 3 years so i'd like to spend a little bit of time in thinking about what's important when you when you move from a campus to a uh, corporate uh, remember that it's a journey that is not about your first job but it's really your next 40 plus years Uh, for some it may be more i can tell you that uh, i already see people in the workforce who even at 70 are contributing because they have the technical skill set they have the knowledge we need the knowledge but in different ways maybe it's not full time but it's part time consulting and for some people you opt to do something else with your lives in a shorter period so it this uh, career is really a 40 plus journey so think of your choices that way uh, in 10 years if you move 10 companies then really it's equal to about 3 years experience so because you, when you're swapping you're not being effective etc so when you make your choices think long term make your choices accordingly keep your long term vision in mind where can you learn where is the industry going which are the options for you to pick to build your career in those uh, in those ways the other element when you move into corporate to be very intentional about is to be proactive put up your hand don't only do what your manager or your team lead assigns to you but in any big organization there are always opportunities for the interested people people who are willing to put up their hand try uh, try things uh, make changes try and fail that's also very important i i'd like to use uh, an example i i was happy to hear a clap but uh, i'd like to use an example of how a company like schneider would drive it but this is typical of any any company one of the schneider values is dare to disrupt the way we drove dare, dare to disrupt is anyone in the company could come together and put ideas which change the world never underestimate your power to change the world and anyone can change the world so we had uh, uh, this uh, employee program where anybody could come together and bring an idea to change the world it was called the dare to disrupt challenge lot of people signed up for it these ideas get uh, reviewed at different levels and finally a few ideas go to the ceo of the company and the winning idea and this happened in just the last 6 months the winning idea really was set up as an incubator so these employees were funded to set up their own company funded by schneider but they resigned from their day jobs because they now had a startup to run and it set up as a startup and many companies offer these opportunities so it's really for you to to look at those opportunities take them up because if you put up your hand for those opportunities they will come your way so don't be afraid of failure when you fail fail fast and learn from failures don't make the same mistake again make new mistakes yeah and learn from them the other element when you enter the corporate workforce or any workforce i hope that many of you will turn out to be entrepreneurs is the only constant in life is change the one thing that you may have all learned all of us learned was from covid in how change can impact everybody but this is really not only about covid you uh, we gravitas is all about a tech fest and technology is really where you see this change so dramatically in your lifetime in just the last 10 years how have you listened to music differently 
how have you watched movies differently a show of hands on how many of you listen to music via spotify amazon prime music yeah that's what i expected and how many of you still watch uh, tv programs at a defined hour versus ott platforms <laughs> so I, i'm just trying to illustrate how much it has changed technology has changed for you in your lifetime and this is absolutely true in the industry the pace of change of technology is absolutely significant now if i take the space that schneider works in we are a lot in energy management solutions yeah of course we are known for our breakers you will see it in your uh, in your uh, college as well you will see mccbs you will see the circuit breakers many of these are schneider products but behind this change one of the big changes that you will see is iot has become our reality today the amount of sensors that are out there and these sensors are being made by all companies an example of a sensor that schneider would make because we are in the electrical space is uh fire and safety are important elements right so uh, heat sensors become very important because we want to be able to warn our customers very early that hey you have a potential risk now heat is still after a fire starts how can we warn people before a fire starts so we are now working on sensors that can detect when plastic starts to burn not even burn before when it's at a stage where it will always burn there are certain materials that get eliminated emitted can the sensors detect these material this is where we need the electronics the electromechanical brains to really think how do we develop these sensors how do we build the technology into these sensors we need the embedded engineers to build the logic into them then what do you do when you have sensors on your products this sensor generates data these data have to go somewhere right that's where you hear a lot about data cloud you hear about data lakes for these you need skill sets on data you need skill sets of people who understand how to organize data how to store data one big change on technology you see is just the volume of data data science is not new uh, it was called statistics earlier it's now called data science uh, now but it's fundamentally about the mathematics the logic uh, behind this data but the game changer is the volume of data that gets generated now if this data has to be stored then you need data engineers if data needs to be processed and do something useful with the data you need to build models on top of this data these models then need to learn that's what ai is all about that the models that you create are learning what are these models for example again i will use a schneider example if we have to be able to predict failures on our systems our systems are really about enabling our customers to combat co climate change everyone talks about climate change right everyone knows about it but climate change is really something that all of us have to contribute to solving it what causes climate change it's predominantly i caused by emissions and emissions are predominantly caused by either how we produce energy or how we use energy and that's where we help our customers to also manage energy to be efficient we can talk about renewables we can talk about going solar all of those are facts but a bigger change can be made by each of us in this room and by every company by how we manage energy because the amount of waste in how we manage energy is very high if you are able to offer solutions there if you are able to create digital twins that are about setting up efficient buildings when you are designing buildings some of you here will become architects will join companies that build big buildings if you are able to build those buildings in an energy efficient manner then you are saving energy and that is a big big part of uh, of managing our carbon footprint that's where things like digital uh, twins come into play we hear a lot about cloud what is cloud cloud is really this huge storage that you can centrally manage instead of building racks and racks and racks of pcs in your backyard right that's really what cloud is these are more scaling of existing technologies and from what i described to you more and more companies will go away from products in boxes to solutions all the way from products sensors on products sensors that send data data that goes to a cloud or an edge depending on where you want to compute uh, building models on that cloud that will 
offer uh, companies to help their customers build solutions, in our case, to combat climate change and CO2 emissions. And then all of the technologies that you learn about, that you hear as hot technologies, will fit into any of these spaces. Yeah? Things like maths, which may not be very exciting uh, for many people who, take, uh, who may be here, is really what data science is all about. Yeah? Things like electronics is what goes into those sensors, into the products that talk and generate the data. So for me, all of the skill sets that we build across the traditional engineering disciplines and the newer engineering disciplines are essential for us to go from these box products to end-to-end -end solutions. And in our case, uh, climate change and uh, sustainability become a big part of what we do. To also understand how you as an individual can make a small difference, you will, when you, when, if you go to the stalls uh, and stop by the Schneider stall, you will see the Green Yoda program. Green Yoda is really how can you contribute and understand your CO2 footprint to see how your little contribution can change the world. So go ahead, understand that better because if we have to deal with some of these world problems, we need the brains in this room. You are the future for tomorrow. We are the past. You are the future. You are the ones who will change the world in the next 20 years. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your inspiring words. Now, we would like to call Puroja to introduce our respected guest of honor. Good morning to one and all present here. It takes me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to our guest of honor, Mr. Deepankar Bhattacharya. Deepankar Bhattacharya has more than 25 years of experience in sales and business development with various multinational companies. Currently, he heads the India Education Experiences at Autodesk India, leading their education strategy in premier institutes and education apex bodies across the country. Between 2014 and 2016, he was leading the Autodesk Education Program in APAC. He has a strong customer relationship with academic influencers and thought leaders in the ed education ecosystem. Under his leadership, Autodesk has been able to establish as a thought leader in the academic space. Prior to Autodesk, he held senior roles in sales business development at Rolta India Limited, Acta Consulting and Tata Alexi. Deepankar holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in, from NIT Warangal. We are honored to have you with us, sir. I would now request Mr. Deepankar, sir, to kindly address the gathering. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, it's nice to be back at Gravitas uh, 2022. I was right here um, about, I think, approximately three years back in 2019. And nice to be back in person again three years later. Uh, on behalf of Autodesk, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the entire management of uh, VIT, in, led by the Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Vishwanathan, for having invited me again and associating with Autodesk for Gravitas 2022. Uh, so respected uh, dignitaries on the dais uh, and uh, all these teachers and the faculties and my dear students, uh, uh, let me just uh, put some perspective uh, you know about why Autodesk uh, is associating with Gravitas and what is our vision and mission for Autodesk in education. Of course many of the points my esteemed speaker has already spoken about. She spoke about the newer skill sets. Uh, she also spoke about artificial intelligence. So I'm not going to repeat those. Uh, but let me just start off with a few things uh, which are very pertinent to this world today. Uh, if you really look at the world population today, uh, we are at about 7.5 billion and by 2050 we are expected to be at about 10 billion. And most of this population today 
is the middle class population which is exponentially growing and there is a huge implication of this population growing with the rising population there is a demand for new infrastructure there is a demand for newer products there is a demand for houses communication devices and so on and so forth and statistics say that you know with this the impact of the growing population is newer products of approximately 3 lakh 70,000 newer products per day needs to be manufactured. So what does it actually mean for all of us? What it actually means is that we cannot continue to work the way we are working today. We really need to have a different kind of a skill set, a different kind of a mindset to fulfill the growing demands of the population and the consumer. And that is where I think a company like Autodesk, a technology leader like Autodesk, uh, is going to play a very, very pivotal and a vital role. Uh, we are committed to this area of upskilling and reskilling. Now, why are we doing this? Now, whenever I visit any college, one of the typical phenomena is that, oh, our mechanical engineering seats are decreasing and my CS and other IT related disciplines are increasing. Many colleges are closing down mechanical engineering, which we as a technology leader in mechanical and other conventional disciplines are very, uh, you know, very concerned about it because it's not that jobs are not there in mechanical engineering and civil engineering, it's just that the industry is not finding the right skill sets. The jobs, the jobs are, different today. So you need to have different kind of skill sets and mindsets to fulfill the demands of the industry. So while our foundational educational curriculum is excellent, I think what is important and pertinent for all education institutions including VIT is to embed newer technologies and emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, generative design, embedded electronics, design for manufacturing, and so on and so forth. So I think a blend of curriculum with the foundational curriculum, I know VIT is doing a lot of work with the industry, including Autodesk, uh, but you know, I think it's important to blend this curriculum together to fulfill the job roles that are required by the industry. And that is what we call as curriculum 4.0, which links to industry 4.0 for the different job roles that are available in the market, especially in disciplines that we focus on, primarily the conventional disciplines, the mechanical engineering, and the uh, <coughs> civil engineering. Uh, so I'll, I'll also like to just give you an example of today the buzz is the electric vehicle, okay? And I just wanted to give you the technology impact on technologies like generative design, which is powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning. So can you guess how many components are there in a typical electric vehicle? Any guesses? There are approximately about 25 to 25,000 to 30,000 components in an electric vehicle, okay? And GM has put the vision that they want to, in the next couple of years, they want 20 to 25 variants of the electric vehicle. So by using technologies like generative design from Autodesk, you know, they are able to improve the uh, uh, they are able to lightweight different components of the electric vehicle. Uh, they have actually done a pilot on the seat bracket, okay, which approximately the weight came down by 26%. The implication of lightweighting a vehicle is that, you know, you, there, there are other aspects to it, like you, the fuel efficiency and other aspects to it. So what I mean to say is by using technologies like generative design, in one component, imagine the impact on so many components and how efficient the vehicle can give. That, that's what is the power of technology. So I just wanted to give you, a, you know, the impact of technology. So, but then to use this technology, that is where the talent in mechanical engineering and other conventional disciplines, those need to be embedded by the premier institutes like VIT. They are doing a lot of good work using generative design and that's my next flow of my presentation about our association with uh, VIT. We are doing a lot of great work with the different student teams. Last time I spoke about the SAE car where they use generative design as a technology to reduce the weight of the rim of the wheel of that vehicle. Uh, 
moving forward, we are today doing a lot of projects use of, through uh, the different faculties of mechanical engineering, Professor Devendranath and Professor Rinald, where they are using generative design as a technology in different projects that they are using as a part of the funded research projects uh, in their department. We are also looking at, uh, you know, at having a, a large a partnership with VIT, uh, uh, you know, having an MOU in terms of a product design lab. I don't want to steal the thunder at this point of time, but what I can firmly commit is that we are committed to partnering with VIT in this mission of empowering the next generation engineers and designers with the tool sets and the skill sets that are required by the industry. Um, finally, uh, you know, I will be failing in my duty if I, you know, uh, thank, don't thank the convener of Gravitas, I think Dr. Arunachalam, uh, who has put in a lot of effort in, you know, in, uh, in running this program. It's a mammoth program. And getting all these students, you know, together, I am told that, uh, you know, there is a, uh, there is a large, I, I was told it is in five digit students that we have more than ten, tens of thousands of students who are present. So, you know, we are very happy to be associated with Gravitas. We have a host of activities that are planned at Gravitas. We have a stall here like Schneider. Uh, we have a stall here where you can get to know more about our technology solutions, including generative design and our cloud-based technology. Uh, we also have two design competition. One is RoboWars, which we have been running historically for the last couple of years with VIT. We also have another design competition, which is a 36, 24-hour uh, hackathon, which is called Manifest, run by faculties of mechanical engineering. So I think over the next two days, uh, you will get to know more about, uh, you know, what Autodesk has to offer in the, in the areas of design and manufacturing, uh, the cloud-based technologies that uh, we have to offer. The word cloud is very, very meaningful and important to us because cloud doesn't need a high-powered computer. Uh, you know, the processing happens on the cloud. So we have this technology called Fusion 360, uh, which uh, you will be on display at our stall and some of the design competitions. So we are committed to, uh, to our relationship with VIT. Uh, finally, I would like to end with three words. Uh, we are here to inspire the next generation. We are here to engage with the next generation and we are here to prepare the next generation, all of you, for the jobs of today and for the jobs of the future, especially in mechanical and civil engineering. Thank you very much, and have a great uh, event. Thank you, sir, for motivating us with your words of wisdom. Our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. G. Vishwanathan, was a student leader in his 20s and entered the Indian Parliament in 1960s. Understanding the power of education, he founded VIT in 1984. Sir, your vision truly reaches beyond the horizon. So we now humbly request you to inspire us with your presidential address. Good morning, our chief guest of today, Dr. G. Satish Reddy, scientific advisor to the Minister of Defence, our guest of honour, Mr. Chitra Sukumar, Vice President of the Snyder Electric, another guest of honour, Mr. Deepankar Bhattacharya from Autodesk, Bangalore, Respected Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Vice President Shankar Viswanathan, Assistant Vice President Kadambri Viswanathan, Registrar Professor Arunachalam and the team who are the organizers, my dear student organizers, professors, guests, members of the media and press, and my dear students, very good morning to you. It's indeed a happy occasion to celebrate Gravitas after a 
gap of two years. Gravitas 2022 is a very big event. I know the students and teachers have taken long time and especially the student organizers, I would like to congratulate individually all of them for their wonderful work in arranging more than 140 events in this uh, two day, three days. And also participants, apart from 10,000 participants from VIT, we have externally about 3,000 students from many universities and countries. Uh, it is not an ordinary task. It is done by our students, organizers, and teachers. I congratulate all of them. I am happy that Dr. Satish Reddy, in spite of his busy schedule, is accepted to be here. He is one of the rare Indians who have worked for the country's defense. And uh, probably, I don't know how many of you know, that in 100 years is the only Indian recognized by Aeronautical Society London with an honorary fellowship and a silver medal. Another important thing is, he is our proud parent. His daughter studied here. So we have a very good relationship with him. Of course, uh, uh, we would like to call him many times and he has never said no. That's the attitude of uh, Dr. Satish Reddy. I thank him. The Gravitas as it's a science, technology and management festival. And uh, as it was pointed out by our guest of honor, Mr. Deepankar Bhattacharya, it should help us to take our country forward economically. See, any country, if it wants to come up, it, has, it can come up through education and also research and development. Any university is recognized by its research publications, patents, etc. And uh, now the government is also interested in uh, increasing productivity. In fact, the slogan of Government of India is Make in India. Because we have been importing a lot of items and now we want to manufacture some of them here itself. But in spite of it, we are still importing many things and uh, it is the future. As uh, uh, Chitra Sukumar said, you are the future. And in the future, we will have to change the fate of this country. Because so far, we have done so much for the development, but it is not enough. They say, India is rich, but Indians are poor. Why is so? In the economy, we are the fifth largest economy of the world. In fact, we have overtaken our rulers, Britain, UK. We have overtaken them last year. They were in the fifth place, we were in the sixth. Now we have become fifth in the uh, total world economy. U.S. is number one, China is number two, Japan is number three, Germany is number four, and we are in five. But when you take per capita income, our ranking is 140. So how is that going to change this? It is possible only through our hard work, our production, and our export also. As it is, every year we have a deficit in, uh, in uh, balance of payments and balance of trade about uh, 170 to 200 billion dollars a year we are losing and that's how the rupee is losing its value I don't know how many of you go through this it's very important because every day I find uh, I'm pained to see that the rupee against dollar is increasing now it has cost 81 rupees I always remember I was my first trip was to US was in 1971, at the time a dollar cost was 7.5 rupees, 7 rupees and 50 paise. Now it costs 81 rupees, etc. No doubt it has to increase, but not to this extent, that's because we are not exporting enough. Our export must go up, our import must come down. That's what the government wants. Our Prime Minister says we should become a 10 trillion economy. It is possible. Only thing is, we must 
have enough production in this country, our production must increase and also productivity where we are lagging behind in many things. For example, agriculture. We have more land, arable land than China, but our productivity is much lower. It is in this research, we must be able to produce and help the farmers, the agriculturists, the industrialists, etc., so that we will be on par with the developed countries. That's why so much importance has to be given to higher education and particularly research where we are lagging behind. Of course, we have so many priorities. That's why we are unable to spend much on research. For example, the, in the whole world, Israel spends the maximum on research. About 5% of the GDP is spent by Israel. Next comes South Korea with 4.8% of the GDP. Next comes Japan, more than 3%. Even China spends about 2.5%. We spend 0.7%. If you take the uh, per capita expenditure on research, we are lagging far behind. Uh, South Korea spends $1,900 per capita, even much higher than US. Japan spends about $1,300. China spends $360 and we spend $120. It's not to decry our country, but we must know the importance of uh, um, research and particularly which will improve our productivity and ultimately we should be able to compete with the best of the nations, especially our big neighbors. Small, even though population-wise, they are comparatively lesser, South Korea and Japan. They have overtaken us long back. We have to compete with them. And it is possible only in the future with you. That's why this technological festival takes place. And where I find there are a number of items which have improved this year compared to what it was last year. I congratulate our student representatives and students for including so many items about 140 items and some of them are totally new, which I was never thought of in my student days. That's how we are increasing, we are improving in science and technology, but it is not enough, it has to be expanded. Because at present higher education is restricted only to the elite. Very sm small number of poor students are entering. The other day I found in the STAR scheme and in the universal higher education scheme, that those who are coming to college, about 70% of them, first time, first generation coming to higher education. This is happening all over the country, but particularly in, uh, in states where they don't spend enough money on education, they are lagging behind economically also. For example, Niti Ayo this year has published the poverty rate state-wise. The minimum poverty is in Kerala, about 1%. The maximum poverty is in Bihar, 51%. And if you take education also, Kerala is a leader. Of course, next only to Tamil Nadu. Their GER is 40%. Bihar's GER is 15%. And it reflects wherever you have better education, you are bound to grow. Economically, you are bound to grow. And uh, the publication of Niti Aagyog should open our eyes that whoever spends more on education, gives more better education to their students, their children, they are bound to come up economically. And uh, that is why the importance of research, technology, science, technology, and management. I congratulate the organizers uh, for this wonderful work where you have invited students from all over India is going to be a very big success and uh, I would like to thank our chief guest Dr. Satish Reddy and our guest of honor Mr. Chitra Sukumar and Deepankar Bhattacharya for having accepted to be with us today. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir, for always keeping the fire in us alive. Now, I would like to invite Kapinesh, the Gravita student organizer, to introduce our respected chief guest. Technology is best when it brings people together. Good morning and a warm welcome to everyone present here. I am extremely honored and privileged to introduce the chief guest of this prestigious occasion, Dr. G. Satish Reddy. Dr. G. Satish Reddy, scientific advisor to Raksha Mantri, is an acclaimed defense scientist of international repute. A visionary leader and institution builder, Dr. Reddy has with his technology leadership over the past four decades deeply influenced and impacted the design and the development of multiple technologies and systems for the defense of the nation. In his career, from a system designer to the chief of the defense research and the development organization, he has ceaselessly contributed to the cause of indigenous development in the area of defense. In his role as the Secretary, Department of the Defense R&D and Chairman, Defense Research and the Development Organization, DRDO, Dr. Reddy spearheaded development of advanced defense systems and technologies through major programs. India's maiden successful test of anti-satellite ASAT missile, Mission Shakti, was successfully executed under his watch. He is the first Indian to receive an honorary fellowship and a silver medal from the Royal Aeronautical Society of London in more than 100 years. Dr. Reddy was recognized by the Royal Aeronautical Society for his contributions to the design, development and the use of variety of missile systems, aerospace vehicles, guided weapons and avionics technology in India. He also holds various other awards such as the Missile Systems Award from the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, AIAA. His persevering nature and positive work ethic are some of the many unique qualities that we as students should definitely try to inculcate. I, on the behalf of the Gravitas 2022 and everyone present here, call Dr. G. Satish Reddy to address the gathering. Very good morning to all of you. Honorable Chancellor, Sri Vishwanathanji, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Rambabu Kodali, Vice President, Sri Shankar, the guests of honor of the today's Gravitas 2022, Ms. Chitra Shukuma, and Shri Deepankar Bhattacharyaji, Assistant Vice President, Ms. Kadambari, and the Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Narayanan, and the Registrar, the deans of the various faculties, the faculty members, and most importantly, the students from VIT and also the students from various institutes across the country and globe who have come here and the guests and friends from media. Once again, very good morning to all of you and my best wishes to all of you. My heartiest congratulations to VIT and most importantly the students who have organized this Gravitas 2022 in a big way with more than about 40 or 50 institutes participating across the globe and having large number of students participating in this techno manager fest which is actually friends I want to say these are the fests which actually inspire, drive, trigger the fire in you to come out with innovative products particularly with students joining from various academic institutes and exchanging various ideas, seeing how the world is growing, how the various institutes, how the innovation is happening, how the science and technology is growing, actually that triggers the inspiration in you to come out with newer and newer products. And so I am extremely happy to be here amongst you and seeing this a large 
gathering of students and I believe this hall itself it can accommodate about 2,000 students who are there inside and the people who are outside. That actually inspires us to be actually working more and more. In fact, let me tell you, most of the scientists who come to academic institutes, they come, they get charged up and then they go back to do a lot of research. This is actually a reality. Friends, if you look at the trends, what was a decade back and today, particularly in the last 5-6 years, the scenario is changing a lot in the country. The nation is going through tremendous transformation. Look at, actually if you look at uh, the number of engineers what were getting produced about 3 decades back in the country were bare minimal. Every state had about 5-6 engineering uh, colleges or institutions. And today, we are producing about 1.3 to 1.4 millions of engineers every year. This one sea change, so much of engineers are being produced here in the country every year. Engineers are very important in any society. They are the people who bring the science from science to technology and to a product what every man and being looks for. You just, when you open your eyes in the morning, leaving aside the weather and environment and everything. Every product is what is produced by an engineer. This mic, this handset, the chairs, the tables, this building, this light, what not you think is produced by an engineer. So engineer has an important role to play in the livelihood of any human being or the society. And so we are the people who generate the continuously the products for everything across the branches. As Mr. Dipankar uh, Bhattacharya was saying, each and every vertical in the engineering is very, very important to come out with various products and technologies. And as I said, the transformation going through, 1.3 to 1.4 million engineers are getting produced. And earlier, about 10 years back or 15 years back, most of the people who are getting produced from our premier academic institutes were going abroad. We'll take even IITs. But today, more than 75% of the IIT students are staying back in our country. They are all here. They are all working here in this country. Either through working through companies or they themselves. This is one thing. And if you look at most of the people who go abroad earlier, they used to settle down there and they stay back there. Whereas today, many of them are coming back. In fact, most of the IITs which have come up recently, if you see, they are all the Indian postdocs who have worked outside and they are the people who have come back here and who are working here in our institutes today. This is another major change. And about 10 years back, most of the engineering students cutting across the branches, let it be even metallurgy, majority of them were joining ICT, Information Communication Technology area. And that has changed today tremendously. Every branch, every student is playing a role in every field. I can give examples. Young students who have come out, I can talk about a student who has come from Coimbatore, just about 25 years old, man, who is working on propulsion technologies, who is working on interplanetary motion related propulsion technologies and working on green technologies and all that, that boys and they have a startup in Indian Institute of Science and working with DSRO and DRDO and various other people. There is an youngster who has come, a 24 years old man, who was working on materials, the composite materials, the rockets what we need, composite rocket motors, have a limitation in temperatures the boy worked for much higher temperature composite materials and delivered it to the defense. See how people are working in various alloys, smart materials, materials. People are working in different fields across that. So this is the sea change of what has happened. Similarly, the number of startups which started coming up in the country. The exponential rise. In 2016, there were 471 startups. And today, 
2022, as per the records of the government of India, there are 75,000 startups here in the country today. 75,000 startups working in different fields. I can tell in the Ministry of Defense itself, lots of um, startups have come who are working in varieties of areas. They are working on guns, they are working on tanks, and you talk about this type of a field, tremendously working youngsters who are coming out with their innovative products. I am sure that the Def Expo, which is going to be there next month in October, lots of startups are coming up, and in fact, including the areas of space and many other areas, artificial intelligence related, cyber technology, lot of people have come and lot of people are working in this area. This is one sea change what has happened in that. Similarly, academic institute side, if you look at about 15-20 years back, just it used to be teaching and some practical work. Now today, academic institutes have taken up projects from industry, from government, from various departments. I don't think there is any institution in the country, most likely, most, um, I can say 99% of the institutions have projects from some, someone or other today. They all work in things. And I don't have to tell about VIT. VIT has got projects from everyone, every department, every industry, and even from DRDO, number of projects, continuously working with various, on various aspects of it, and VIT students and professors and continuously working on it. This is another sea change what has happened. Continuous interaction with R&D organizations and uh, industries. Similarly, there were not incubation centers at all earlier. Now, majority of the important and significant institutions in the country and the universities have incubation centers which are promoting the startups and youngsters to come out with industries. This again a sea change what has happened. To this supporting, government is coming out continuously with the policies, schemes and support mechanisms in a big way. Like example, the youngsters are doing extremely well today in drones. India is becoming a hub for drones. Varieties of drones are being developed. Recently when Honorable Prime Minister has come and visited a workshop and an exhibition in drones, there are more than 120 startups which have displayed their products of drones. This is one thing. So the government has come with a drone policy to support these youngsters and the startups in a big way. Likewise, space related, a lot of reforms have been brought in to support the industry and startups to come out in space area. Likewise, there are lots of support mechanisms which are coming, funding mechanisms which are coming in a big way in the country. And so that's how, as uh, the Honorable Chancellor said, the government seeing this is giving lots of calls. Honorable Prime Minister, first he gave the call for Make in India. As he was saying, as there were lots of imports earlier, you try to make everything here in the country. So, with a collaboration or yourself or establishing industries yourself by the foreigners or lots of um, investments and everything, this country will be producing here all the items is one thing. But then also has seen the technological evolution what is happening in the country, the types of products which the nation is coming out with major developments. Couple of them I just want to tell you to see that this country has developed a gun, 155 artillery gun. You must have heard the speech of Honorable Prime Minister on 15th of August from Red Fort, where the indigenous gun was fired in, and the awas, the sound of the firing of the gun was heard first time. He said, after 75 years of independence, we are hearing the sound of an indigenous gun which is developed here in the country. That, con that gun attacks 155 artillery gun which is developed is the world's longest range gun. No other country has a 155 artillery gun which our country has got today. As um, somewhere it was being mentioned, 
we have done an anti-satellite test which is one of the most critical missions when you do an anti-satellite test the satellite is in the low earth orbit and when you fire a missile to hit it the relative velocity between the two will be roughly about 11 to 12 kilometers per second and you have to go and hit it with centimeters accuracy India is the fourth country which has done the test very successfully after Russia, America and China we have become the fourth nation we have today friends you see very close to you here in Bangalore we have developed our own fighter aircraft LCA Tejas where Indian Air Force has given 83 numbers now and 40 numbers earlier 123 numbers of Tejas aircrafts and lots of enquiries are coming from the entire world today many things like that you must have seen very recently just about 20-25 days back Honorable Prime Minister has commissioned the indigenously built aircraft carrier INS Vikant a huge ship where aircrafts can land on it our own Tejas is landing on it and the completely that is built here in the country with indigenous content being more than 75 to 80 percent of it the complete steel what is used in that is developed here in the country and we are building our own ships our own aircraft carriers in the country so major missions many many new things and lots of advancements in new technologies today the way the youngsters are coming out in artificial intelligence every day i can see one product which is coming out and i can tell you today in couple of years every product which will be coming out will be with built-in AI into it similarly if you look at about five six years back I don't think anybody was there or maybe very few handful of companies were there which were working in cyber technologies and today you have lots of cyberspace related technologies companies which are coming coming out with our own cyber products today in a big way the most advanced subject quantum communication or quantum related technologies we are one of the first companies in the uh, first countries in the world which have established a quantum communication between two cities in Uttar Pradesh for 100 kilometers at one go 100 kilometers the anti-drone system we are one of the first few countries which have developed the anti-drone system and deployed it in various things and getting deplo uh, inducted into the armed forces today. So a lot of work is going on. In the academic institutes, in the curriculums, artificial intelligence has become a subject. Quantum technologies has become subject. Cyber related technologies has become a subject. And we have introduced defense technologies in the MTech courses through AICTE. There are more than 40 academic institutes now who have introduced the defense technologies as part of their MTech programs. This is a sea change again happening. And so a lot of research, a lot of R&D happening, lots of innovation mechanisms happening in here in the country. Friends, seeing this, that is how Honorable Prime Minister has given the call for Atmanar Bharat. A very, very, very important step. What is Atmanar Bharat? Self-reliant India. Meaning, you are having the capability to develop here, design here, produce here in volumes, manufacturing capability. That means you have the complete know-how, know-why and you are not dependent on anybody for any critical things and strategic things except leaving aside the commercially off-the-shelf items which are freely available. So that is what is self-reliant India. So that is the call given by Honorable Prime Minister which we all need to take it forward say that this country can develop anything the country can make anything and the country makes the most advanced things and not that we make it after somebody makes after 5-6 years or 10 years we also make that and we are no more a technology follower and we will be technology leader and I can confidently say that in my areas of defense Today we are self-reliant in the area of missiles, radar, sonar, torpedoes, electronic warfare systems, aircrafts, um, guns, artillery guns, ammunition and what not and all that the country is self-reliant today. We can make it today. And so we need to be making everything here in the country as a capability to develop. 
this capability to be developed in the country and take it further forward. Once you are becoming self-reliant, immediately the call came from Manalbar Prime Minister as make for the world. Not just don't become self-reliant that I will make the things for myself and all that. If this country, as actually um, the Honorable Chancellor was mentioning, if this country has to go per capita and work on everything, the country has to come out with the technologies, innovations and the products have to be sold everywhere in the world. Talk about any, work, any country in the world that should have an Indian product. If that situation has to come, that means our product has to be most advanced in technology wise and innovation. It is an innovative product in multiple ways and that is produced at the lowest, lowest cost and the cost wise it is competitive and we are at the lower cost and having a sustained quality and reliability. These are the most important things. And that is how, so science, from science, technology, technology to an innovative product. This is what is the route what we need to uh, take it and complete manufacturing capability in the country. The manufacturing capability in the country is the one what actually makes the economy run. See today, the manufacturing in the country is, contribution is about 17% of the GDP. Our target what is laid right now immediately is about 25%. If the manufacturing increases, that means your product is sold everywhere, you are able to produce more. Lots of jobs, lots of revenues, lots of turnovers and the economy is improving faster and faster. So that is what is required today. All of you who are here should come out with innovative products and most advanced technology products. Meaning, we as I mentioned some time back, we can't be technology followers. Somebody develops, later I develop it. No, we should develop first. We should develop first of its kind products. And that is what makes India proud or Indian product will be sold everywhere. So don't wait for anything. What is required for tomorrow? What is required for day after tomorrow? We need to start developing it here. Starting from the academic institutes where the core research happens. From there the technology and the product and the innovation you people have to take it forward coming out with the continuous innovations. We have done wonders even abroad most of the companies or most of the advanced technology products are, are coming out of with the brains of India who are working there elsewhere. And it is now we have to do that from this country, from this motherland and come out with innovative products and most advanced technology products. So work on those technologies and advanced products which coming out with innovation. That is what the festivals like Gravitas inspired you all of you. You all have energy, you all have the brains, you all have the capabilities. Something need to be driven. I just give you one example. When COVID pandemic has come in 2019, this country was not having ventilators here in the country. We were importing. That is the scenario where we cannot import anything. Honorable Prime Minister actually formed a team, work on the ventilators and try to develop it. Everyone, academic institutes, hospitals, engineers, DRDO people, Bharat Electronics Limited, industry, joined together, worked day and night. I can tell you that my team which was working, the 20-25 people, every day left in the morning, early morning, 4 o'clock and back in the office at 9, 9.30 and started developing through industries and then all these products were uh, small small walls, flow sensors, what not and everything complete PCBs, software, everything is developed and tested in hospitals, multiple hospitals in the country and in a matter of four months the 14th of August 2015, 2019 30,000 ventilators were delivered to the country 30,000 ventilators which is developed here in the country at a cost, I can tell you it is almost one-fourth of the cost what an imported system comes. So that is the capability what you all have here in the country. It is only to be triggered and it is only to be inspired and that fire to be inspired for to be getting generated and you are the youngsters with all the schemes available in the government of India, particularly in the Ministry of Defense. IDEX is one thing which is supporting in a big way, promoting all these hackathons, ideathons, what not and all that and giving support to the people. Similarly in DRDO, 
taking the cue from Dr. Kalam, dare to dream. Dream, dream, dream is the one what he was saying. You dream to make a great product, great engineer, great system and that taking there is a contest every year on the 15th of October on the Kalam's uh, birthday it is being done. And similarly there is a scheme called which is a very important scheme all of you please note from all the academic institutes it is technology development funding from DRDO. If you have a concept, if you have a design and it is useful to the Ministry of Defense or civilians as a dual use and that idea to be converted into a product, this technology development funding was funding up to 10 crore rupees till recently and more than about 60 industries have been funded. Now Honorable Raksha Mantri Sri Rajana Singh Ji has increased this funding up to 50 crore rupees. You have an idea, you don't need anything. You have an incubation center in the institutions like VIT and through that incubation center you apply if the idea is good and idea is a necessity for the armed forces, 50 crore rupees can be funded to you and you can use that and come out with your industry and your product and later armed forces will order on you, you can produce them also. So these are all the various schemes which are supporting which were not there and so utilize them, use the opportunities, use the brains, come out with innovative products and make yourself a great man, excel yourself, make institutions like VAT excel, get the name for the institution, get the name for the country, make the country proud and prosperous, technology is the one which can make the country proud and prosperous, that is all in your hands. My best wishes to you, Jai Hind Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir, for inspiring us with your vision. Coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. And working together is success. And this is indeed the working mantra that has brought all our efforts to what this fest stands for today. With this, now I would like to invite the student organizer of Gravitas, Divya Darshini, to present the vote of thanks. A very good morning to one and all gathered here. As William Arthur Ward once said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. I take immense pleasure in delivering the oath of thanks on this joyous occasion on behalf of Team Gravitas 2022. At the outset, I would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor for his esteemed presence. I would like to thank our chief guest, Shri Dr. G. Satish Reddy, and the guests of honor, Ms. Chitra Sukumar and Mr. Deepankar Bhattacharya, for making this day memorable with their gracious presence. I thank our vice presidents, assistant vice president, executive director, for their immense support. I extend my profound gratitude to the heads and members of various administrative departments, in specific, offices of registrar, event management, students' welfare, alumni affairs, purchase, stores, finance, CTS, estates, corporate communications and media for making this event a successful one. I thank the deans, directors, faculty and staff members for their presence and wishes. I thank all the students and the external participants who have indeed made this event a huge success. I would like to extend my thanks to the members of the press and media for their continued support. Gravitas 2022 will come to an end in a few days, but it will forever be engraved in each of our minds. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Divya Darshini. This is not the end, but a gateway to beautiful beginnings. Thank you. I'm your host, Nitin, signing off. And this is your host, Heli. Thank you so much for being an amazing audience. Do join us at our events. Have a great day.